Hello everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Mel and I hope you are having the most fantastic of days. Today is going to be my part two of my SPFBO reading vlogs. If you guys have no clue what I'm talking about, SPFBO is a fantasy competition hosted by Mark Lawrence. There are 10 judges, 300 books that are whittled down into the top 10 finalists and then a winner is chosen from there. I am not a official judge. I am just a enthusiast that decided to gather nine other enthusiasts to read the finalist and pick our winner just to see how it stacks up against the official winner. This is a piggyback off of Cassidy's version last year and Mel's takeover was born. If you guys want to know a little bit more about who's doing this with me, I will link the announcement video to Mel's takeover down in the description box below as well as the blog post for Mark Lawrence so you guys can get some more information on the competition. This competition ends at the end of April. That's when all of the official reviews will be up and there will be a winner chosen and in order to see how we did against the official judges we need to have our own winner which means I need to get on the reading. I still have five books left. If you have not seen part one, again, I will link that down for you guys if you want to check it out. You do not have to have watched part one in order to watch this part. It's just going to have the reigning five finalists. So in this video, I'm going to be reading The Fall is All There Is, The Last Fang of God, Hills of Heather and Bone, Wickwire Watch, and Masters of the Void. This is the one that I'm probably the most excited for because it is Cassidy's finalist. I was on her team to help her whittle down through her 30, get a semi-finalist, and then help her choose her finalist. And this is the one that won. You guys know that Cassidy and I have very similar reading tastes, so I'm so excited to pick it up. It is getting so many good reviews from Mel's Takeover as well. It's probably the one I'm most excited for, but it's also, I think, the chunkiest. I don't know what I'm going to start with, so I guess let's kick it out to future Mel, who will tell you about my first read. Okay. As always, I hope you cannot hear my washing machine in the background. It's Sunday, and Sunday is just laundry day for me. Today was a special Sunday because I... Whoop, you good? Today was a special Sunday because I did have to work today, and on my way home from work, I decided to go buy Dutch Brothers. And we just recently got a Dutch Brothers in my town. There are several of them popping up in the city around us, but there's actually one like 10 minutes from me. And I've never really been able to find exactly what I liked there. So I decided I would go, I would see what they thought. I ended up getting a Golden Eagle, which I think is one of the fan favorites. It's basically like a caramel vanilla drink and I got it frozen. It's really good. I enjoyed it, but we should outlaw the small talk and the drive through at the coffee shop thing. I'm not a fan. I know that they were trying to be all like sweet and personal and I get it and I love it. And if you love it, more power to you, but I'm tired and I've been at work and I went in the mood for small talk. So anyway, it was fine, but I definitely won't be going there first thing in the morning before I have had my coffee. I will tell you that. So I have started The Last Thing of God and I'm liking this one. I think I'm about 30% of the way through it. It is very short and it's a standalone, which kind of worries me a little bit. We're following a father and a daughter and the father came to this village many, many years ago and he has made a life for himself. He's just kind of living in peace. And one day he gets a visit that tells him that his daughter is going to die unless she travels to one of the like, I think it's the tree god and basically gives herself over to him. If she doesn't do that, then she is going to be dead within a year. The caveat is that the god of, of the place where he was living, Bode, told him that she was going to be safe. And so now he is got to pick her up and whisk her away in order to try to save her life. This story has several different kinds of magics. We do have gods in here, but we also have rune magic. And I don't fully understand how the world or the magic system works right now. I'm hoping I will learn a little bit more about that as we go, but I do wish that was just a little bit clearer. What I do know, I think is really interesting and different. We know that he has something wolf-like about him, but again, we don't fully understand exactly how all of that works. And so I'm hoping that we will learn more. We know that his daughter is like him and he is the last remaining full blood of his kind. I think my biggest issue right now is the daughter dad relationship. It's very weird. I think the author is really trying to show us that he has like a wolf's temper and she does too, but that he still loves her. But instead, I feel like I'm kind of getting whiplash back and forth between the characters because one minute he's raging, angry, screaming, crying in her point of view. And then we flip to his chapter and he's like, oh, but I'm calm now. And I just feel like I'm getting slung all over the place with the character's emotions. And it's kind of hard to follow and connect with them in that moment. And I do find that the dialogue is not my favorite, which may be making those moments a little more jarring than they 
normally would. So I'm interested. I'm excited to continue on and I definitely want to know more about these gods. Good morning, friends. I am headed into work, but I did want to tell you that last night I was able to finish The Last Fang of God, and I ended up liking this one. I think as we went along, the writing started to settle in a lot more, the characters started to settle in. I do wish we had gotten a little bit more world building, and I think that it could have benefited from being a little bit longer. I don't necessarily think it needed to be a to be a series this is a standalone but i think it could have benefited from being just a little bit longer some of the scenes felt rushed like some of the explanations and behind the world building and the plot some of the explanations behind the like motivations and some of the battle scenes and things like that like his relationship with his past clan did feel a little bit rushed to me so i think that that could have been improved but overall i did like this one i still think that the characters mostly the side characters i did not love i didn't think that they they really had any presence in the book, but I did like the father-daughter relationship. So for this one, I'm going to give the characters a seven. I'm also going to give the plot a seven. I loved the rune and gods aspect of this. I thought that that was a lot of fun, really cool. I just wish I'd learned a little bit more about it. Same thing for the world building. I guess that falls more in world building plot. I just wish that it had been a little bit longer so that we had gotten to see that journey a little bit more. I do think that the travel is not my favorite, but I did like the plot overall. Um, I'm going to give the writing a six. Like I said, it did settle in a lot more, but that's where I struggled the most, especially in the dialogue. And then enjoyment, I think I'm going to give this one a seven, which rounds it out to a 6.8, rounded up to a seven, which is a three star read. So I enjoyed this one. I thought it was good and I'm excited to continue on. I think next up is going to be The Fall is All There Is because I had that one on audiobook. We're going to ignore the boxes situation that I've got going on over there. Every like couple of days, I'm taking out another box. It's fine. It's fine. I do have a reading update for you guys. I am about 20-ish percent of the way into The Fall is All There Is by C.M. Kaplan. How do I describe this book? So we're following an autistic main character, and this is a world where they use injections to like, I don't know, give you a level up that you wouldn't normally have so like you can have better agility and more focus and things like that and these injections are very very powerful they're very painful and they definitely take over parts of your body and our main character i believe is the son of a king and there's a lot of politics going on i will be completely honest with you i have read this book i've listened to it and i still can't fully tell you what the plot is and unfortunately i think that that is somewhat by design because our main character is chaotic. He is autistic and like I said the injections make him feel more normal and there's nothing wrong with him being the way that he is. I'm assuming we're going to get that point later on and I appreciate the fact that we have a character like this. I appreciate the fact that somebody wrote a character like this but for me this book is a little bit too all over the place. I do wish that we had a little bit more cohesiveness and a little bit more understanding of the plot in the world because we're so focused on him and him being different and just kind of jumping all around because that's his personality. That's the way he thinks. And it's very clear from the beginning that that's how he's going to be or how they're going to be. And I just find that the focus is a little bit because I want to know more about the world. I want to know more about the plot. And I don't think that that's really the intention of the focus right now. This does feel very side fantasy heavy on the side because these injections and like their lab coats and the lab coats are the ones that know everything. It does feel very sci-fi heavy, even though I think this is set in a fantasy world. Again, the world is just not clear enough. The politics and the dynamics are just not clear enough to me right now for me to fully understand the fantasy aspect of this story because the injections to me feel very sci-fi. I'm going to continue reading it. Hopefully things do start to clear up because like I said, I'm only about 20% of the way into the story. I think the audiobook is really well done mostly. The narrator sounds very fast and I actually had to, I normally listen to books on 3 to 3.1 times speed. I had to slow this down to like a 2.5, 2.6 just to be able to understand him and you can tell that he's speeding up his speech and kind of jumping all around which again feels very authentic to the character but makes it a very hard listening experience. So I am going to continue on with the audiobook for now. I could end up changing over to physical if I don't slowly start to get used to it because typically when I'm listening to audiobooks and it's outside of my normal what I'm used to, as long as I'll listen for like an hour 
hour or two, I'm able to kind of adjust to that. And my brain starts to pick up on things that I was having a hard time with before. So I'm going to keep listening. If I decide to switch off the audiobook, I will let you guys know. But right now I can understand and appreciate what it's trying to do. I'm just not sure if it's going to work for me. Okay, I wanted to do a really quick update for you guys before I go into work. It's very bright outside. It's currently 8.30 and yeah, it's bright. Um, but I got about halfway through The Fall Is All There Is and I wanted to kind of give you guys a brief update. I feel very similar to the way that I did the first time we talked where I like it. I can respect what it's doing, let me say that, but I don't think this is going to be the story for me. It's very, very character driven, so if you're not somebody that's really connecting with Peter, then I don't think that this is going to be the thing that works just super, super well for you because there's not a ton of other plot going on. It's definitely all about him and his relationship with his siblings. The main plot of the story is that there is a coup essentially happening or they're trying to figure out who's going to take the throne after their father died and there are four siblings and they're kind of maneuvering and bickering between the like four of them to see what's going on and I don't know I just find it to be a little boring at the moment because I'm not just super invested as Peter as a character I definitely think he's a unique character I think that there is a lot of like really good things about him and a, that a lot of people will connect with but it's not me so I am struggling a little bit with that I also want to know more about what happened to the injections we kind of mentioned them at the very beginning and then they fell off the face of the planet a little bit so I'm hoping it kind of circles back to that because right now I'm like where did those go but the world is starting to feel slightly more fantasy-esque we're not really getting a whole lot more information but we're talking less about lab coats and injections and more about like politics and who's going to be king queen that kind of thing so I guess it feels a little bit more fantasy I don't know I think this is going to fall solidly into the not for me camp but right now I would say if you are character driven reader that likes a unique character, a diverse character, and you like sibling dynamics, then this might work for you, but just know going in that it's extremely character driven. I have completed The Fall Is All There Is, so I quickly wanted to talk to you guys about my ending thoughts on that as well as what I'm going to be rating it. I don't really have a lot of other thoughts, honestly, than what I've already told you guys. It's fine. It was not the book for me. If you like a unique character and you don't mind this character, then it might work better for you. But it was just a little too all over the place for me and not enough plot. It was a little too character focused, especially considering I didn't love the character. I struggled with that a little bit. So I'm going to give the characters a six. I can appreciate Peter for the character that he is. I think that he was a very strong character, had a very strong voice, and I'm not really docking a lot of points for not relating to him but I do think that where this book struggled was in the side characters he had three siblings there was a mom character there was like this there were a lot of other side characters and I just never feel like I fully got them I fully knew who they all were I couldn't tell the difference between the brothers because there were like two or other brothers and I didn't I couldn't tell which was which anytime one was being talked about because they all felt very much so the same so characters are going to get a six the plot, I'm going to give a five. There was not much plot to speak of. What was there was fine. It's not my preferred version of politics, but there just wasn't enough plot for me. World building is very similar. I wish that there had been more of it. We just did not get a lot. The writing, I am going to give a 7.5. I think that it was pretty well written. I didn't have any issues with that. And Enjoyment's going to get a 5 from me as well. So that's going to get a 5.7, which is a two star. This is a book that I can understand why people would like, but it just, I couldn't relate to it. So it was not the book for me. Okay, next up I think is going to be Hills of Heather and Bone. This one is one that scares me a little bit, but I am excited to give it a try. Hello friends, we're going handheld because I only have the tripod that is mini and I'm probably very overexposed because I'm hiding in the bedroom because the microwave is on. I was going to make this nice garlic parmesan chicken and potato thing for dinner and then Publix forgot my potatoes and I didn't have any potatoes and it's like a key ingredient so we're not making that. And then I bought this like frozen cheddar bake thing, but it takes an hour and a half in the oven. So we're microwaving it, which means I'm hiding from the noise of the microwave. But I want to give you guys an initial update on Hills of Heather and Bone. I will be honest, this is one of the ones that I was pretty unsure about, like cautiously optimistic because it was described to me as grim cozy. Heard a lot of people say it was very slice of life. And I was like, oh no, I'm really not going to like this book. But 
100 pages in and I'm actually having a really good time. We have got two characters, they are married and it opens with them like healing or attempting to heal a young boy. And we learn about the magic system and how all of that works. And she is like a bone weaver. And so basically she can control bones, including dead people's bones. And the dead like speak to her and anytime someone dies or she's around somebody that has died, they reach out to her and want to tell her their story. And so I just found that that magic system was really cool, but people don't trust and don't like these bone weavers, they're scared of them. So they are persecuted and hunted down when one day a group does come and knock on their door, accuses her, and they are on the run for their life. So that's kind of up to where I am right now, and I am enjoying it so far. Like I said, the magic, the world is really cool. I think that it has got a really strong writing style, so I'm enjoying that as well, and I'm hoping that this pace continues. I have a halfway update for you guys for Heels of Heather and Bone. Unfortunately, this one is starting to lose me a little bit. After about that first hundred pages, we did fall into the fear of mine, the slice of life, the, you know, what's happening day to day kind of thing as they started to settle in. And unfortunately, this just isn't my preferred thing to read about. It was less about the magic, more about their relationships and some like family dynamics and things, which is fine. I think that that's important to talk about too, but it's just not really my thing to read about. I definitely would consider this grim cozy. The themes brought up in here can be quite dark at times, but that doesn't distract from the fact that it does still feel very cozy in the slice of lifestyle. So while it's still well written, I just, I'm finding myself to be a lot more bored than I was before. I'm hoping the second half picks up quite a lot, but I know from hearing other people talk about it that it is very cozy and very slice of life. So I'm not holding my breath for that, but I am hopeful. Okay, I've just been sitting here reading while I'm waiting to light up to kind of get moving and do what I need to do for the rest of the day. And I was able to finish Hills of Heather and Bone. So I wanted to give you guys a quick update on that and go through my rating for it. I don't really have a lot more to say than what I did before. It did end up being a little too slice of life, a little too like focused on relationship problems and relationship issues and motherhood and things like that for me. There was a plot point at the end that was fun, but I definitely think it was like the first 70 pages were really good and the last 50 pages were really good, but everything in between was not my preferred. Let's go through the rating for it really quickly. For characters, I'm gonna give this a seven. While I think that our main character was pretty well developed, I never felt like I truly knew them. Like we would talk about them talking to one another and and their relationships with one another and how they had a good marriage, but I just never really felt like I knew them in a lot of depth. So while there were good moments, I just wanted more depth to them. Perry drove me up the freaking wall. He was a little too, we're gonna get through this, you know, for me. And that's just, it, it drives me crazy because when things are bad, it's okay to be sad about it, not to tell people that they can't be sad about it. And there were conversations about that, but it was a little frustrating. The plot, I'm gonna give a five and a half. Again, the first 70, 80 pages were good. The last 50 pages had some plot, but everything in the middle did lull a little bit for me. The world building, I'm gonna give a six and a half. While I did like the world building that we got, I just wanted more of it. It was in that first 60, last 50 pages, but not a lot in between. So again, I just wanted more of that. And the writing, I think I'm gonna give a 7.5. I did like the writing in this. I thought that it was well-written. And Enjoyment, I think is gonna get a six from me. So overall, that is a six and a half, which is going to be a lower three star. I think that if you are somebody that likes more of a cozy slice of life, you like bone magic, you like relationship issues and discussions about things, then this might work better for you than it did for me. But if you are somebody that is a plot or world-driven reader, I don't know that this is gonna be your vibe. Next up, I think we're going to go into the Wickwire Watch. I think, maybe, it's my next audiobook. So don't hold me to that, but we'll find out in just a second what I went with. I feel like I always have something running in the background. This time it's the dishwasher. Next up, I think we're gonna move into Wickwire Watch. This was probably the second most anticipated for me, the one that I was really looking forward to aside from Master of the Void. Master of the Void is definitely my number one, like super, super excited for, but Wickwire Watch was definitely the second. I have started this, I am listening to the audiobook, and the vibes right now are giving me Neil Gaiman in his more like whimsical area, not American Gods, but like Ocean at the End of the Lane and Neverwhere vibes. That's the vibes I'm getting from this book. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. I think that it is extremely well-written, just like The Fall is All There Is, 
but I'm not sure that the writing style is gonna jive well with my brain because I feel like it's going in one ear and out the other, even though I'm hearing the words and I can appreciate the cadence of the words, they just don't stick very well with me. And I, it's the only way that I know how to describe that. And I, I don't really know why it is because I feel like it's well written. It could just be me today. So I will definitely report back on if that's better once I've gotten a little bit more sleep. But I don't know, something about it is just kind of whoop in one ear and out the other. I do like our main character, Ink. He's a very sassy little boy, um, but he's interesting. I don't have a clear, like super clear grasp on the plot yet. I'm really not that far in. I just figured I would update you guys on what I had read while I was here. But this is about Ink and he has always been told to trust no one. He lives on his own and he is a big kid. He doesn't need anybody to tell him what to do. And a man dies and he is considered a, what are they called? Does it say in the synopsis what they're called? I forget it starts with a C. But essentially there are these people that are considered the big bads, these people that are killing people and rampaging through the city. And this guy died, he'd lived there for nine years and was found to be one of these like bad men. And so Ink decides to go snooping through his house one night and finds a pocket watch that is full of magic. And now he has like ghostly specters after him. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. And the concept is really, really interesting. So I'm hoping that I start to sink into the story a bit more because I do like the writing style and I like the idea of the story. I just really wanna be able to like sink into it. And I think that maybe I will be able to do that tomorrow. I'm hoping when I could just like sit down and focus on the book. I have finished Wickwire Watch. I meant to give you guys a halfway update on this, but honestly, I was just listening and vibing and I managed to finish it. I liked this one. I don't have a ton more to say about it than what I did before. Although I do think that the writing started to settle in a little bit more for me. I think it was just me, honestly, that first day. I was on the struggle bus and I don't know what was wrong with me, but I didn't really have any issues with it after that. So I really do think it was just me that day. But I had fun with this one. I think that it was well written. I think that it was a good time. I don't know that it'll like super, super stick with me, but I did have a good time with this and I would consider reading the sequels. For my ratings for this one, I think I'm going to give the characters a seven and a half. For the most part, I thought that the characters were really well done, especially Ink and some of the other like close side characters. It almost felt like small town vibes, but not really, but that's kind of the impression or that's kind of the feeling that I got from that friend group or I guess friend group is not the best way to put it, but that's what it felt like. And then for the plot, I think I'm going to give it a seven. The plot is probably the part where I struggled the most just because there were points, especially in the middle where I felt like the plot really lulled, but I liked the ending a lot. The beginning and the end were by far my favorites. And I think that it just could have stood from a little bit better pacing throughout. For the world building, I'm gonna give that an eight. I thought that that was pretty well done. I enjoyed it. The writing is gonna get a nine. I do think it was incredibly well written, even though it was kind of like, what is that middle grade ink um, mixed with Neil Gaiman? That's kind of the writing style vibes that I got from this. And then enjoyment, I think is gonna get a 7.5. I liked this one, but again, like I said, there were some not memorable parts to it too. So I think a 7.5 feels right. Overall, that's going to get a 7.8, which on my new rating scale, is a four star. So I enjoyed this one. I thought that it was good. And like I said, I can be persuaded to continue on in the series. So, so that is a win. I feel like this set of books is already going better than the first set and I'm having a very good time. So let's continue on in that energy and I'm going to be picking up what I cannot believe is my final SPFBO book and that's Master of the Void. I have a reading update for you guys because I have gotten 100 pages into Master of the Void and I'm really enjoying this one. At first, I was a little bit unsure about it just because we were switching point of views so much that I was a little afraid that we were going to switch point of views so much and so fast that I was never going to be able to grip onto the characters. Even though it was only two points of view, we were switching back and forth between those two points of view very, very quickly. But that has really started to level out and I find myself becoming more invested in each of the characters and what's happening to them. This is a world where everyone has magic and on your 13th birth moment, you are tested to see what kind of magic you will have. And one day, Arimond, I think is his name, finds out that he actually doesn't have magic and he is banished from their town. And then we also have have Darius who has always wanted to be a mage but unfortunately on his 13th birthday 
something happens and he misses his testing, so he's not able to follow through with that. It's apparently a story of adventure and coming of age, and I'm sure that there's going to be a whole lot more to the plot than that, but that's really all I've gotten in the first 100 pages. Like I said, I am more invested. This reads so fast, even though it's chunky and the margins are not that big. It just reads super quickly. I'm very engaged in it. We have a helper. Do you like the book? What do you think of the book? Are you enjoying it? Apparently she's not interested, but I'm interested. I think that one thing that I really wish that we were getting a little bit more of was more explanation into the magic system because I don't really feel like I fully understand it. We've had one mention of stars and the void and what all the stars do and what the void means. And then there are like constellations on the front cover. So I'm assuming that's going to play a very big role, but then the magic system like the mages seem to have certain robes and all these colors of the robes mean different things and there's a university and i'm just i'm looking for a little bit more information into what exactly the magic system means what exactly this world looks like and what the plot's gonna be but i'm hoping we'll get there i wish we had a little bit more information at 100 pages but i think that it will get there so i don't know if i'm gonna read any bit any more of it tonight but once I have caught up and read a little bit more I will check in with you guys so far this has been the strongest start that I've read yet we're gonna get real cozy for this update because I've gotten about halfway into Master of the Void and I'm having a really good time with this one I think that the so far this has just been a lot of setup and that is something that I'm hoping that the plot really starts to pick up here in the near future but I'm having a lot of fun with the setup there have been a few inconsistencies that I'm hoping start to make sense later in the story I have a feeling I know how the inconsistencies are going to be resolved but right now they do feel like wait, why is this this way when this was that way kind of thing? And I definitely feel like we are still in the point of trying to get all of the characters where they need to be and like the positioning and everything of who and where everyone's going to be throughout the major part of the story. So I'm hoping that all of that really starts to lead to the overarching plot because I don't really know what that is right now other than maybe the somewhat murder mystery type thing that we've got going on. I also do want to know more about the magic system. I feel like I only have scraped the surface of the magic system. And even though I'm still having a great time, this book is a lot of fun. Even though we're in like the setup part, it still feels very fast paced, but I feel like I don't really understand the magic system super well. And I want to, we've got constellations, we've got robes of different colors. We've got different like earth magics and light magics and things like that. So I'm just like, how does all of this fit together? I just need to know more. And so I'm hoping that we do start to learn more because if not, I'm gonna be a little bit disappointed as we talked about like these stars and the death of these stars and constellations, but then that hasn't really been mentioned since. And then there are colors and I just, I, I want it to be a little bit clear because right now it's really interesting, but very unclear. So I'm hoping we circle back to that. Other than that, I don't really have a lot of other updates other than Darius and his storyline breaks my heart a little bit. <laughs> but I guess every good book needs a heartbreaking storyline. So Darius is mine. But yeah, I think that I can finish this pretty quickly, honestly, even though I'm halfway, it just reads so incredibly quickly and I'm having a really good time with it so far. So I finally finished my last SPFBO book, Master of the Void. I cannot believe that we are finally to the end of this vlog, end of SPFBO 9. Like, what the heck, it's flown by. But I need to give you guys my final thoughts on this. I ended up really enjoying this one, but I do have some slightly mixed feelings. For the most part, I think that this is a solid read. It's a lot of fun. It's coming of age and friendships and bonds and things like that. I liked the magic in here. One of my biggest complaints was that the magic system was not very well explained. That did improve as we went on further into the book. I felt like it did get much better explained. There were a couple of like inconsistencies in the timeline that ended up making sense as to why they felt like inconsistencies but I felt like it could have been done just a little bit better while still keeping the reveal at the end. There was just something about the way that the timeline was kind of woven in that I was like, mm. I felt like that could have been done just a little bit better. There were some pacing things that were not my absolute favorite. I definitely felt like a lot of this book was set up, which I think could have been sped along just a little bit, but mostly I just had a fun time with this. I was along for the ride. So let's quickly go through my final ratings for this one. For the character, 
characters, I think I'm gonna give them, I think I'm gonna give them a 7.5. I liked the characters a lot, but I do wish that there had been a few things that just felt a little bit clearer motivations and a little bit more depth to some of the characters. Not all of them, definitely a lot of them I quite liked, but I do wish there had been just a little bit more depth to some of them. The plot, I also think I'm gonna give a 7.5. While I really enjoyed the plot, I feel like there were a few things that are were not paced the best in the world. For the world building, I think I'm gonna end up giving that one an 8. If you'd asked me at the beginning of the book, it would have been like a 7, but as we went on, I felt like things could get better explained, and I understood the magic system in the world a lot more. I liked seeing the other side of the world through Armin's point of view, and I so I think that one's gonna get an 8. The writing in this... I'm not sure. I think I'm going to give it an 8 for the most part. I think the writing was really well done. There were definitely a few things that I was like, mm, we could tighten that up just a little bit. But overall, I did enjoy the writing. And I think that my enjoyment is also going to be an 8, which gives us a 7.8 overall, which is a four star read. So that is a wrap on Master of the Void and SPFBO 9, you guys. Oh, I cannot believe that we are finished. So there will be a video coming very soon with the final wrap up of Mel's Takeover what everyone rated the books, what ended up winning for our group. So definitely be on the lookout for that. And then I can't wait to get started on SPFBO 10. Like we're done with one. Let's move into the next one. There are too many good indie books to read. If you guys missed the first installment and you want to see what I thought about the first five books, I will leave that right here for you guys. If you just want to let me know that you were here and hanging out, leave me a star emoji for Master of the Void. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are down in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to and I will see you guys next time. Bye!